Once I started to use Terraform, I quickly realized how powerful it is. It's like having a hammer in your hand. And when you have a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. Terraform provider architecture allows not only to automate cloud infrastructure, but also to provision other resources, such as Kubernetes deployments, CDNs, domain records, monitoring tools, and pipelines. You can even order a pizza using Terraform. But what options do we have if there is no Terraform provider available for a service that we're trying to automate? We can write our own provider or open a feature request, hoping someone else will create a provider for us. Or you can take good old local exec and create some sort of duct tape and paperclip solution to create your custom resources. However, just recently the situation has changed. A new Terraform provider was created that takes away the heavy lifting of creating our own providers and allows us to interact with any system if there is an API for it. Hey folks, this is your DevOps mentor Vladimir, and in this video I'll show you how to extend your Terraform configuration and create custom resources using the tool called TerraCurl. Let's say we have an API. This example connects to the service called Open Weather Map and obtains information about the weather in the given location. And here is how we can use TerraCool provider to inject the information obtained from this API directly into our configuration. First, we'll declare the provider itself. Then, we'll create a resource called TerraCool request. Let's give it a name and the URL that needs to be queried. I will use locals to pass the coordinates and variable to pass the API token securely. The method is get, and the response code that we need to receive is 200. Then we can use the properties of this resource to extract the information obtained via Coral. And this place is where the main difference between the TerraCool provider and the local exec happens. You can also send a web request using a regular cool from within local exec, but local exec does not allow you to process the result, while TerraCool exposes it as a resource property. Let's apply, and we can see the weather data obtained from the Open Weather service available in our Terraform outputs. Now let's consider another fancy example. There is an open API that allows obtaining information about the latest SpaceX rocket launches. Let's say we want to know the name of the vessel launched last time. That's Crew Dragon 5. Let's destroy our previous config and implement the web request in Terraform as well. The same strategy here. We'll give it a name, a URL, a method, and a response code that it should expect. And finally, we'll put the result into the output section. Let's apply. And here is our information about the latest SpaceX launch, recording in Terraform output. This looks funny and engaging, but what value can we get from this functionality? Let's consider one more, this time a more meaningful use case. Let's say there is a legacy configuration management database and audit policies in our organization with strict requirements to keep information about each virtual machine that we launch. One common issue with configuration management databases is that they quickly become outdated, especially when there isn't manual steps involved. This is because people tend to forget to make updates and mistakes accumulate over time, creating a snowball effect. But let's imagine that our case isn't too desperate. We'll assume that our hypothetical TMDB at least has an API to interact with. This means the process can be automated. For the purpose of this demo, this simple web server written in Python will play the role of this CMDB. Let me run it in a separate shell and demonstrate how it works. We can send the post request with the information that we want to add to our database. Here we'll have an instance ID, instance type, and other properties. And here's how it will look when we open it in the web browser. To delete an item from our records, we'll use the delete request. 
And here is how we can automate the process using Terraform and TerraCall. Let's say we'll create an AWS EC2 instance using Terraform. And immediately after the instance creation, we'll send a request to update our CMDB directly from within our Terraform code. We'll pass instance properties or any other required request payload through the request body field and process the response code accordingly. But we are not done yet. We can send requests not only when we create the resource, but also when we delete it. So in our case, when the resource is deleted, it will connect to CMDB one more time and remove the corresponding record. Let's run Terraform Apply and check our database again. When we update the browser page, the info about our virtual machine is delivered there automatically. Now let's change the instance type and see what will happen. The instance size has changed and the appropriate record has been updated with the latest information. And if we set the count to zero, the instance will be deleted and the corresponding delete request will be sent using TerraCall. That's how you can interact with external APIs and create custom resources using TerraCall. If you enjoyed the video, please support the effort by giving a like and subscribing. Thank you for watching and good luck.